AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Here are today's top headlines. Toyota reports a big loss. GM threatens its Canadian Union and Hyundai tests the waters for a $75,000 luxury car. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Friday, May 8th, VE Day, 2009. And now the news. Toyota lost $4.3 billion last year. Revenues were down 22%. But for the last quarter, the numbers are a lot worse. Toyota lost $7.7 billion from January through the end of March, which is worse than the numbers we reported for General Motors yesterday. Even more concerning is that Toyota forecasts its loss will double next year. And the Wall Street Journal reports that Toyota sales in China fell 17% in the first quarter, even though the Chinese market grew by 4% overall. Other big automakers doing well in China include Nissan and General Motors. In fact, GM reported that its sales in China in April rose 50%. The journal says Toyota missed the boat by not having enough small, fuel-efficient cars, and it missed out on sales in rural areas. CIW President Ken Lowenza says that GM's operations in Canada will be liquidated if the union doesn't agree to more cuts by May 15. According to the Detroit News, in a meeting with GM officials and the Canadian government, the union was told a new agreement would be protected if GM filed for bankruptcy. But if the union does not agree to concessions, the Canadian government will not provide loans and GM Canada would be liquidated. Dacia unveiled the Sondero Stepway at the Barcelona Auto Show yesterday. It features chrome trim accents on the exterior. Inside, white stitching set off against black seats enhances the look. It sits up to five and comes with either a gas or diesel engine. The Sondero Stepway goes on sale in Europe this September. It's already sold in Brazil and Argentina, badged as a Renault. Dacia, of course, is Renault's low-cost brand. And Wards reports that Opel's thinking about introducing a low-cost brand of its own. It's considering reviving the Wartburg nameplate, which has been out of production since 91. Yeah, 91, they built those things through in East Germany. And then at the other end of the spectrum, are you ready for a $75,000 Hyundai? Autoblog reports that the company is shipping 100 Equus sedans to U.S. dealers to gauge public interest. Supposedly, it's comparable to a BMW 7 Series or a Mercedes S-Class, but are American car buyers ready for a full-on Korean luxury car? Company executives back in Seoul desperately want to launch a premium brand in the U.S., and with this move, looks like they're getting serious. Words reports that the U.S. Department of Energy is working on a new smart charger for electric vehicles. It aims to do two main things protect the nation's electric infrastructure, and save you money. When plug-in EVs become widespread, the grid might struggle if everyone plugs in at the same time. The smart charger is programmable, so owners can decide when their cars recharge. It's also able to communicate with the grid to determine the best time to juice your batteries, which means at a lower electrical rate. A smart charger could save EV owners up to $150 a year. Coming up next, a preview of this week's episode of AutoLine. We'll be back right after this. Changing tires out here could be dangerous, but with these tires, I don't need to worry. Bridgestone. This week on AutoLine, I'm joined by two guests. Tom Caquette from the California Air Resources Board, and Jim Harbour, veteran industry analyst and publisher of The Harbour Report. In the following clip, Jim and I talk about the Detroit 3's manufacturing and the problems caused by the public's perception of their products. Right, well, there's still a perception, regardless of what the cause is, there's still a perception that this industry is making junk. And the byproduct of this industry making, thinking we're making junk is, the big three, Detroit big three, have been putting about two or $3,000 extra on the hood of the car to close the sale. Big numbers. 
What that means, when we were making 10 million units here a couple of years ago, the Detroit 3, you're giving away $30 billion a year. $15 billion at GM and about 8 or 9 at Ford and the rest at Chrysler. All in sales and centers. All in sales and centers because nobody believes we're making high-quality vehicles. They all think we're making that 1976 Velari and they're madder than hell about it. To watch the rest of this interview, as well as my conversation with Tom Caquette of CARB, you can catch the entire episode of AutoLine at our website, AutoLineDetroit.tv. Well, the last thing on the agenda today is to announce the winner of this week's trivia contest. In light of what's been going on at the company that bears his name, we challenged you to tell us what the P in Walter P. Chrysler stands for. And it's a good old-fashioned name, too. The correct answer is Percy. It's Walter Percy. Chrysler. As always, my crack team randomly selected today's winner from the pool of correct responses, and this week's winner is Stuart Summers of Prospect, Connecticut, which he calls the best small town in Connecticut. Congratulations, Stu. You just won a super cool Nissan Xterra t-shirt. I just hope it's the right size. Anyway, that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Visit our website for even more great content all week long. Auto Line Extra, Don's Journal, Podcasts, and even more. So click over and get the inside view at AutolineDetroit.tv.